I've enjoyed so many meetings with Prime Minister. He's such an incredible student. And every time I see him, he wants to learn about technology, artificial intelligence, the potential and opportunity for India, the impact on India's society and industry. And so I was delighted to be here to talk about it. India, as you know, is also home of some of the world's greatest computer scientists. So this is a great opportunity. Artificial intelligence is also a new industry, a new manufacturing industry that's very important. And so I'm looking forward to partnering with India in a very deep way to make that possible. We have many partnerships with India. Uh, for one, we're helping India gain access to our most advanced technologies. We're partnering with internet companies like Yoda and end-to-end uh, uh, -end networks and to create the latest generation AI supercomputers in India for all of the startups. India is the home of the third largest startup economy. And so this new generation of startups are all based on AI. And in order to do so, you have to have AI infrastructure. Just the number of partnerships we have all over India. Uh, every, every IIT has an NVIDIA AI center of excellence. We're teaching uh, professionals, we're teaching students how to upskill into this new world of AI. AI in a lot of ways is very complicated technology, but in the end, what it enables a country to do is take advantage of technology, take advantage of computers in a way that has never been possible before. And so AI really democratized computing. This is India's moment. You have to seize the opportunity. India's entry into the high stakes world of semiconductor production has been making waves and it's no surprise. Commerce Minister Piyush Goyal dropped a bombshell in New York, stirring up excitement in both Silicon Valley and Wall Street. What has U.S. giants like NVIDIA, AMD, and Micron buzzing with curiosity and investors itching to jump in? Well, India is preparing to roll out its first homegrown semiconductor chip in just two years. This ambitious venture has even domestic heavyweight Tata revving up its engines. You see, there's a thrilling countdown underway. Two years, just two, until the world's largest democracy dips its toes in semiconductor waters. While they might not rival the likes of TSMC or Samsung immediately, the groundwork being laid is a tapestry of talent and skill that's drawing global attention. Prime Minister Modi's government is not sitting on the sidelines. They're orchestrating a path that might just shift the global tech power balance. This raises the million-dollar question. Could India's burgeoning semiconductor industry become the next big player on the global stage? And how are companies like Apple reaping the benefits of this narrative? Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Investocracy. Uh, India's Prime Minister Modi meeting with top tech executives leading the global AI revolution. Our own Steve Kobach was there, and he spoke to CEOs of both IBM and NVIDIA yesterday. He joins us now with some of the highlights. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Yeah, so uh, like you said, Indian uh, Prime Minister Narendra Modi meeting with several tech uh, CEOs Sunday in New York ahead of the UN General Assembly that's going on all this week. Among the attendees was NVIDIA CEO Jensen Wong, Alphabet CEO Sundar Pichai, and Accenture CEO Julia, Julie Sweet. You can see the rest up there. The topic, of course, artificial intelligence. Tech companies from Apple to Google see India as a prime investment area thanks to a growing middle class and large workforce and I was able to catch up with two of those attendees Wong and IBM CEO Arvind Krishna let me give you first Wong's overview of the meeting with Modi praising Modi for understanding the importance of AI Prime Minister Modi is inspiring every time I've seen him he is such an incredible student loves technology loves artificial intelligence he was one of the first people I ever explained artificial intelligence to this is an extraordinary time for him and time for India because it's a reset of the whole computing stack. Now, I also asked him if he discussed with Modi kind of clearing up that bureaucratic red tape American companies often complain about when they're trying to invest in India. But he actually said that's not really a problem for NVIDIA in India. Take a listen. I haven't really experienced that. NVIDIA has been in India for almost 25 years. Our design centers are in Bangalore, Pune, Hyderabad, um, really fantastic engineering capability there. Uh, some almost 10,000 NVIDIA engineers are in India. Uh, they do every single aspect of our engineering, and so uh, they've been, a, they've been a, a part of our company since the very, very beginning. Picture this, a landscape bustling with tech hubs, engineers huddling over microchips, and conference rooms buzzing with discussions. That's the scenario Goyal paints of India's aspiring semiconductor industry.
It's a fascinating tale of a nation intent on revolutionizing its tech landscape by crafting chips, a task easier said than done, given the dominance of Taiwan's and South Korea's tech behemoths TSMC and Samsung. But if you were hoping for Wall Street-type drama, here's a joke for you. Why did the semiconductor factory get locked down? Because it had a short circuit. Jokes aside, this is no laughing matter. India is serious about its technological renaissance and is poised to make a significant impact on the global semiconductor stage. Recent interactions with U.S. chip makers such as Micron signal robust progress. Goyle can be seen nodding in approval, having kept close tabs on this evolution. The semiconductor strategy comes at a time when American tech companies like Apple are visibly shifting focus to India, evidenced by Apple tripling its manufacturing capabilities. From iPads to iPhones, 14% of which are Indian-made, Apple's expansion isn't just a strategy, it's an endorsement of India's burgeoning potential. An Apple spokesperson was mum on this endorsement, but India speaks through numbers. 150,000 jobs by Apple's largesse. It's an economic backbone, easing the reliance on China. Prime Minister Modi's plans are far-reaching, making it clear that they don't hinge on China's trajectory. With Apple commanding an increasing share of the local tech manufacturing scene, it's a reflective nod to Indian competencies. Their capabilities, as Goyal firmly believes, eclipse region-dominant narratives. Investors such as BlackRock, Warburg Pincus, and KKR have shown keen interest, seeing India's strategy as lucrative in the long haul. Even with infrastructural and bureaucratic challenges, the burgeoning interest from heavy hitters like Google and Microsoft in India's AI ventures is a strong vote of confidence. But before we go any further, if you want to keep up with NVIDIA's latest updates and keep up with the stock market's latest news, you can follow our Twitter account. We post multiple times daily about the biggest changes and catalysts in the market, so click the follow button if you don't want to miss the newest market updates. Now back to the video. Now another company that has a big presence in India is IBM. So Krishna from IBM was also at the meeting and praised what happened there and told me a bit about the delicate dance of doing business in India, even though it's tacitly supportive of Russia by buying the cheaper oil from that country. Take a listen to what he said there. Countries are going to do what benefits each country. So you got to put those things a little bit to the side and say, is there any national security threat? So let's look at the major things. If you look at the geopolitical lens, doing cooperation between India and the U.S. is going to be strengthening the, both these nations to the point where then you can go take care of all the other secondary issues. Krishna later told our Seema Modi it's up to the U.S. government, not private businesses, and said you, the U.S. has been encouraging businesses here to do business in India. Now, some more details from Seema from a source inside that meeting. Modi gave Alphabet Sundar Pichai praise for committing to invest $20 billion in India and pointed to his investments in Indian companies like Flipkart and Geo. And, of course, because pharma CEOs like David Ricks of Eli Lilly were there, discussions were held on biotech and IP protections for U.S. companies operating in India. Sector analysts point toward imminent challenges. Girdling through red tape, addressing infrastructural lags, all shouldn't deter ambition. Modi's government has demonstrated elasticity in tackling such hurdles, coupled with an eager tech community ready to overcome pretensions. With a workforce of bright young minds, educated and technically adept, India is injecting its intellectual prowess directly into its semiconductor aspirations. The government's establishment of technology parks and educational incentives are aimed at creating a fertile ground for innovation, thus ensuring continuity in this ambitious mission. A close look at trade statistics reveals the trajectory of India's tech imports slowing as more components are domestically produced. This initiative not only promises economic benefits, but also strengthens national security by reducing external dependencies. Additionally, the push towards Make in India becomes increasingly meaningful as it meets the strategic goal of self-reliance in critical technologies. The government's vision extends beyond mere economic growth. It seeks to establish India as a cornerstone of global technology, leveraging its strengths in software and IT services to complement its burgeoning hardware capabilities. Don't be surprised if the next ticker on your stock app reads, Made and Innovated in India. By diversifying the tech supply chain, India is not only safeguarding its interests, but also offering alternatives to the globe. In this context, India's traditional partners along with new allies find common ground, lending their expertise and investments to further mutual progress. Strategic collaborations with countries like Japan and Israel, known for their own technological innovations, highlight a network of alliances that could disrupt the existing semiconductor hierarchy. 
the shared aspirations and pooled resources are catalyzing a global shift towards a more interconnected and diversified tech ecosystem. But before going any further, if you made it this far into the video, thank you. These videos take a lot of effort and time to make, so if you enjoyed them, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. This goes a long way in helping us grow. That said, back to the video. And finally, just as a kicker here, guys, I asked Wong about that Qualcomm Intel merger report that we got on Friday. Uh, here's what he told me about that. We're doing it our way, as you know. We're a very different company. Uh, NVIDIA builds the full stack of AI infrastructure. We build everything from chips, the systems, networking, to CPUs, to GPUs, to switches. Uh, we, write a, we write an emor enormous amount of software from algorithms all the way to applications for artificial intelligence. And so uh, we're determined to move forward in the way that we do. And I think in this new world, you really have to be a computing infrastructure company to be able to bring all that technology to bear. So I think the implication there, guys, is they control what Wong called that full stack, meaning right. the software and hardware part. That's the, the competitive so, advantage they have there, so guys. So Steve, here's the question. Yeah. Going to that last point yeah. about this deal. Do you see the U.S. government and you see uh, <laughs> I know where you're going allowing with this. this deal? Is this a good deal? Um, in some ways, it would probably, look, if you can get Intel, if you get some competition to NVIDIA, yeah. that would be a good thing. 80% margins are great for NVIDIA. It's great for Jensen. It's amazing what they've been able to accomplish. But long term, if you want AI to actually have any kind of true economics, that, that's going to have to be sliced in half, right. if not more so. The only way that's going to happen is if you get competition. The question, though, is do you want competition coming from uh, a company that's owned by Taiwan, even though they're maybe our allies, or do you think that it has to be owned by somebody in the U.S.? I was looking at it a different way, Andrew. I was looking at it from the PC business and where Intel and what's really going on here with Qualcomm on the PC side. This this uh, summer, Qualcomm put out their first PC chips that are actually good, meaning they can run faster. They're like on par with what you experience on your Mac. They're based on the same technology as those. Intel is still way behind on that. That's why Apple ditched Intel. So I almost read this as a way for Qualcomm to kind of expand its PC footprint more so sure. than this AI thing. But you don't think it helps on the AI front? Oh, it, it can, but Intel's AI chip, we don't know where it is. Qualcomm isn't necessarily producing those kind of chips. It's still a mobile first company and IoT and things like that. As India races towards its ambitious semiconductor dreams, one cannot ignore the transformative power lying in these nascent plans. For those with an adventurous investing spirit, this might be the inflection point. With robust governmental backing and bustling market interest, the Indian semiconductor mantle could indeed translate into substantial prosperity. Today, Apple and others have already tasted India's capabilities, a prelude to the technological prowess this nation is on the brink of unleashing. The stock valuations in this sphere are already showing a promising trajectory with investors diversifying portfolios to include India's emerging tech powerhouses. Afraid of missing out? That's the whisper-making rounds among investors eager to vouch for India's tech ascension. The call for investment is loud and clear as India lays down a clear path for its tech industry to flourish, encouraging global entities to take the plunge. As the government continues to streamline processes and make the tech business landscape more accessible, optimism is in the air. The focus is not just on monetary return, but also on the collaborative spirit that is drawing nations closer with shared technological goals. Curious about where this journey will lead? Share your thoughts, because this isn't just a solitary narrative, it's a global conversation. As the world watches, whether it cheers for or critiques India's progress, it cannot help but acknowledge the undeniable momentum of this tech revolution. The collective anticipation from investors, analysts, and tech enthusiasts worldwide is shaping a future where India stands as a pivotal pillar in the global tech narrative. And finally, if you would like to know what companies like NVIDIA have been up to these past few days, go ahead and click on the next video on your screen. See you there!